Okay, y'all. So I'm back with another Amazon video. So this is going to ignore my pillows. Uh, you know, today is wash day. So I got all my linens and stuff in the darn wash machine right now. So my bed is completely stripped down. But anyways, speaking of stripped down, honey. Child, we were stripped of all access early this week. And you know it was a blessing that I took the days off that I took off ahead of time. Honey, this was darn going divine intervention, so to speak. Honey, because I already scheduled myself to be off like that Saturday for like the upcoming week. I took all of Wednesday off because I needed to have some tires put on my car. Also, house searching and trying to get back into doing other things like food delivery, this, that, and the third. Because I knew it was going to get to a point where Amazon was slowing down. Because once I seen that, I was like, okay... They said we might be working upwards of 60 hours. We're in the midst of peak post Thanksgiving. And I'm not getting the calls back to back accessibly day in and day out like I thought it was. It's it's too many days where I'm getting like, you know, I'm it's a 10 minute break in between phone calls. And I was like, if this is happening during peak, I was like, what in the world is about to happen, you know, after January? Now, I think we're supposed to be obligated to, you know, I think we're guaranteed our jobs until at least March. From what I heard, because peak supposed to be a minimum of six months. Now, I was expecting to already transition out in January anyways. Um, but I think we're guaranteed our jobs until at least March. And then they, that's when they will start laying people out. Just did my shift bid for the third time. Uh, shift bid came out um, the day. And the loophole to this was there was some contradicting information that was put out. They said first, if you wasn't scheduled to work during that time. It, it, first, they was like, if you ain't scheduled to work today, don't do the shift bid. Um, or shift bid has to be mandatorily done at the beginning of the day. You got the ops in the project work for five minutes. But then I was like, okay, but don't we get five minutes of meeting time to check our emails? And y'all said that the meeting time can only be used at the very beginning of the day. So is we losing that is we losing that entire day to check our emails? It, it, it's it's an either or that day. Why can't it be both? Like, why can't I use the first five minutes to check in to my emails and then another five minutes to do my darn going uh, shift bid if y'all want to make it on the clock so bad. Honey, I think at this point nobody gives a damn about getting paid a dollar and 25 cent to darn going be on the clock to do the shift bid because you do get paid um, when you opt into like a project work to do your shift bid. But it's like, who in the hell is stressing over a dollar and twenty-five if you can actually get to your, sh if you can put in your bid early to darn going, um, get your desirable shift. Even though they keep putting out this lie that oh, the shift bid is not first come first serve. The hell it ain't, honey. How come every time I sneak and look at that shit uh, early, it is it's showing as if honey certain stuff is already uh, blocked out. And then it's like, I thought the darn going, uh, the preferences were indefinitely saved. I had to darn going update my preferences. Here I darn going, thought I was doing something by darn going, getting up, you know, doing my, um, shift bid right at, um, at the three, right? Child boo. I had to darn going to do my preferences first. That took up five minutes. So once again, another contradicting information because it, it was like, Okay, y'all said five minutes, but y'all didn't even take into account that, oh, updated preferences. And you got to highlight every single thing. Like, you got to highlight which is the unacceptable shifts that you wouldn't do. You know, you got to color code it. I wish I can show y'all. But once again, I don't know what I'm allowed to show and not to show. So, I try not to do too much. I know I definitely can't go into proprietary information. But I think stuff like showing the shift bid... I got to inquire about that, but I think I should be okay with showing y'all that how that works with highlighting the colors, um, with your preferences, and then you go in, into doing your actual shift bid. It then I think it's 
correlates your hours in conjunction with your team manager because your team manager got to be available like at least 80% of the time. And I think that's what's low-key fucking me up. I think it's because, you know, my manager is not available super early in the morning. And it's like I got to be available 80% of the time that she's available. I don't know, but I know damn well my dog, <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting up early in the morning. And the reason why earlier the better is not only because I can do my other darn on jobs in the midst of the day, you know, my Lyft and my, you know, DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats and all of that. But in addition to that, you know, my TV reviews, all of that good stuff, but it's not as many calls in the morning time. If you get up very early in the morning, like 6 o'clock in the morning Pacific Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern, um, 8 Central, I want to say Mountain Standard Time is two hours behind Eastern. <sighs> so, 7 Mountain. So, it's like, honey, you get those types of time slots, you don't have to deal with too many phone calls. So, it's like the first few hours, you just getting paid darn on easy money, honey. The darn on stressful phone calls don't come until later on in the day, which I'm about to find out because I'm now, I have this weird split shift with this current um, um, bid that I did weeks ago. Because the way that your bid is, you put in your bid three weeks in advance for your, you know, shift three weeks into the future. So this shift bid that I just did, I won't start working that shift until the new year, until January. Right now, I'm about to start, um, when Sunday hits, I'm on my new shift. I normally work Sunday um, all the way up until like 6 o'clock at night. I no longer work Sundays for the next, well hell, I actually don't work Sundays no more for the next 6 weeks, honey, because... This shift bid that I just did for January and the last shift bid, honey, I took, I got my Sundays off because with my recent situation, I said, uh-uh, I'm not doing the whole weekends no more. I done gave y'all my weekends coming in the door. I gave y'all Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I dare going to contribute to Monday all long hour days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday were all from early in the morning to late at night and then I had Tuesday, Wednesday short days and Thursdays off. Now I got relatively even days throughout. Now the only thing is ugh, I got to work into night time on two of those days. I think it's Tuesday and Wednesdays. I work from 6 to 9 p.m. So still not too long but ugh, I was not trying to figure out. I was not trying to deal with how Amazon works at nighttime, honey. Y'all y'all could have had that child. But, you know, first three hours, I got 11 to 2, and then I got a four-hour break in between, and then come back 6 to 9 both of those days. Everything else is, like, straight through. But, honey, what darn gonna hit the fan this week was, honey, our whole darn gone system went down. We can't pull up nobody's information or nothing. So I'm at the house, and mind you, I'm logging into the computer. I'm totally oblivious to this. So I'm logging in. I'm checking my emails, right? I didn't see nothing about... I, I, I did see an email from my manager talking about, you know, how to report outages and stuff like that. But I was having issues logging on to the computer. So, I had to darn on send her a message through my phone like, hey, I might have to reach out to troubleshoot. Unbeknownst to me, the reason why I couldn't even log in was because of the issue. And then, mind you, I was so late that I didn't even have time to really do my emails because you're only allotted the first five minutes once you are at the start of your shift. But I was 12 minutes late getting in, even though I was trying to start up my computer 15 minutes before work. So that's how late it was. And then, you know, they give you an eight-minute grace window. They give you eight minutes of boot-up time. So technically, I was only like four minutes late. If they would have deducted points, I mean, you know, time, they would have only took out four minutes of unpaid time or whatever. But anyways. Whew. As soon as I get in, right, 
I immediately get a phone call. It's a transfer. And the, the person talking about they, the system is down, this, that, and the third. Once again, I'm coming into this totally blind. I done pulled up the, the side chat room and I ain't had time to look at no messages. I get blindsided. Customer on the phone want to get into the account. I'm looking and I'm experiencing this right off the rip. I ain't got no information beforehand, so completely blindsided. And then before I'm even able to get into the chat to see what's going on, I get two more calls back to back. I don't know nothing about the script that we supposed to read or nothing. So thank goodness they are not judging us by our phone calls um, for that day. Because like I said, I came in the door. <laughs> I'm talking about coming in the door as if I walked on the site. But, you know, I got onto my computer totally blind. I got to my computer to a crash system, can't pull up no names, finding up stuff as we go. I'm just darn going with my years of customer service experience. I'm just coming up with my own script to say off off the riff of, you know, I can't access your uh, information at this time. Please, you know, give us a call back within that time frame. Da, 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 da. I finally get a little break in between to look at the darn on chat room. And sure enough, honey, that's where the confirmation came in that the stuff is down. So, then came the long time between calls. Now, I told you we was already dealing with 10 minutes between phone calls. Now, it got to the point where it was like 25 minutes between phone calls. I was like, oh, hell. Let me darn on Google search to see what's going on, honey. And sure enough, it done broke with them. Uh, it done broke worldwide that Amazon is down, child. I was like, child, thank goodness this is my short day, honey. <laughs> I don't got to sit in there. Because we still had the darn on sit at our, you know, be ready at our darn on um, computers or whatnot. And then the thing is, there's been this issue with the notification sound for weeks. And, you know, we ain't, they, they told us we supposed to reach out to the specialized department to, to talk about that. Because they think it's an individual issue. But it was like, well, hell, m multiple people been having this issue. It's really a system issue. And then and the way that y'all keep throwing these trainings and stuff at us in the midst of peak. But we can't opt into training to do our darn on training. We got to do it in between phone calls. But we really can't do it in between phone calls because of the fact that we don't got the notification sound to tell us a phone call is coming in. And even if we did have the notification sound... How we supposed to distinguish the notification sound from the darn on simulated phone sound because some of our trainings actually have videos showing us about the darn on system. So it's like, you know, our managers telling, well, at least my manager telling me to do the training in between calls is unrealistic. Just because there's enough time between phone calls to, to do it. It's like with the notification sound being absent and us not really having enough time to even reach out the darn one um, to our tech support. Because ain't nobody trying to lose no hours. Ain't nobody trying to put in time. Because when you have to troubleshoot individually, they might give you a maximum of some time. But for the most part, you got to put in out. And ain't nobody putting in no damn hours. And especially not on technical day when during on all the shit went down. I couldn't pull up my darn on um I couldn't pull up the uh, the calendar to look at voluntary time off, extra time, none of that stuff. I couldn't pull up my pay history, none of that. I was like, honey, as long as they record that I was here. I was like, honey, I got proof that I was here. I done took my screenshots and thank goodness I did because honey, next thing I know our darn going chat room done went down. So we can't converse with our managers in regards to stuff that we can't find in our proprietary search system. We can't even search the proprietary search system at the moment. We uh, Some stuff I was able to actually um, solve to customers because as you do this over time, it's certain stuff that you just retain off the dome that you don't even have to search for so i was able to assist to a certain extent with password resets and stuff like that without having to even um without even having to go into the proprietary search system to do it 
um, advise customers of phishing scams and all that. But as far as checking the status of the orders, honey, I couldn't do none of that, honey. So, 2 o'clock came around, logged off, that was that. Honey, next thing I know, I check in Wednesday. My pay ain't darn on there. I said, oh, hell no. What we ain't about to do is mess with Diva's money. I don't give a damn if I was only here a few hours. Uh-uh, y'all want to pay me? Oh, no. So now, but see, here's the thing. I was off. I was off that darn going Wednesday, Thursday. So today, I had a darn going to put in for my time. So... Hopefully they catch it. They uh, time goes in Sunday, so and it takes about 24, 48 hours to respond to my um, question. So they should catch it just in the nick of time for them to put that darn on money on my current paycheck that's supposed to be arriving next Friday. Hmm. But honey, that was the dilemma with us at darn on Amazon. So yeah, y'all, Diva Wan was affected by the Amazon outage, honey. Uh, it was somewhat bittersweet. <laughs> the sweetness is I ain't have to deal with as many phone calls. The bitter part is the ones that I had to deal with was a little bit more irritating because they was darn on trying to inquire why I, I should know. That. I'm, I'm like, honey, I'm customer support. I'm not tech support. I'm, I'm tired of y'all who think that just because we're customer service representatives that we post to double as the IT department. Once again, customer service rep. And darn gone tech support is two totally different things. Don't think because you calling in regarding your order and we having system issues, I should automatically know the terminology to tell you about what specific issues is happening with outage. I am not IT. I am customer support. Now, speaking of customer support, honey, with the transfers... They keep taking away our transfers to certain departments. Logistics is getting off the hook. Because during the darn on holiday season where people is getting more and more property damage, honey, they don't now we got to fill out a form. And it, and then we get at, we get cussed out by the customer because they wonder why we just can't transfer them. And then they try to escalate to a supervisor and I try to warn them not to waste their time. You know, I try to be the one that save you. Because I'll be like, okay, I can transfer you, but I'm going to warn you that there's nothing they can do on their end. They're going to basically spend about five minutes reiterating everything I say. And then I get the notes talking about how nobody could hear. I, I was like, well, girl, I tried to darn on save you the time. I tried to save you the time. But no, honey, you wanted to darn on get darn on transfer to a supervisor. Also, y'all who call y'all selves being slick asking for supervisors who think they, they can escalate the issue of basic stuff that us regular customer service reps can do is getting irritating as well. Because number one, it's like I'm gonna still ask you what's the nature of the transfer. And if you ask and if you say some basic shit that I can do, I'm not transferring the call because y'all is not hurting my darn on metrics because we get judged based off of the number of transfers that we do. And then we also get cited if we're transferring uh, accessibly for shit that we can actually do. So don't play that darn on you want to speak to a manager. Unless it's something that I, unless I tell you it's something that's out of my hands. And it's nothing else that I can do on my end. That's when you darn gonna go and request for a supervisor. And then it's so backwards because the ones that do this shit be, be the ones that I can solve their issues. And then the ones that, you know have the issues where I be wishing they asked for a supervisor because we can't just transfer you to a supervisor when we say it's nothing that we can do. Unless you specifically say supervisor, I got to hear your mouth on the damn phone. I was like, damn. Why the, I'm waiting for this. This bitch is darn going to complain in 15, 20 minutes. I'm just waiting for this bitch to say supervisor. That's the magic word. If you are frustrated, please say leadership upper management supervisor if you say any one of those things that would give me the right to darn on immediately darn on transfer you but if you don't say any of those words i'm forced to darn on sit there and then we don't really post to encourage the supervisor word but honey my ass be throwing out hints uh do you want to speak with a supervisor um maybe upper management might can do something like when i start throwing out those words that's for you to take the cue to darn on request for supervisor i can't tell you 
the darn gonna do the Super Bowl. I can throw out some hints. And then from there, you it transferred on over. And then when they ask that you, because they do ask the, the customer, did you ask for us? And then you can say yes. Honey, don't throw me under the bus and be like, well, she mentioned, uh-uh. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get Diva in trouble. So that's the other darn on thing that's frustrating. The darn on transfers over to the supervisors for shit that I can do. And then for the ones who who I do need to transfer out, the darn on outbound line, it, it's under so many different damn links. I wish I could show y'all how they got it set up. We don't have direct numbers. We just got to type in the name and then we click outbound call transfer. But certain stuff, it's just, it'd be like, oh my goodness. And then, Lord knows that we service the entire world, pretty much. You got certain departments where it'd be confusing. And then other agents be calling in. Um, another issue that I'd be dealing with, blind transfers. When I darn go and look and see it's a call coming in and I, I want to be briefed in on what is the issue. And next thing I know, the customer is darn on speaking to me directly. And I'm like, wait a minute, what the world's going on? So now I got to flag the darn on transfer on top of that. So while the customer is telling me they stuff and I'm simultaneously pulling up their account, I'm darn on copying and pasting every single code transfer to me to submit to my management at the end of the day to flag they behind for darn on uh, giving me a code transfer. So, whew, the life of an Amazon darn on customer service agent, honey. But overall, it's well worth it. You get paid $15 an hour. You get the darn on. Choose your hours within reason. Um, we're open 21 hours a day. We're only closed between the hours of 12 to 3 um, a.m. for system maintenance. But outside of that, honey, we're here to darn on service you, honey. So with that being said, hours flexible. You got opportunities to grow within the company. You can, As time goes on, you can take on other positions. Honey, I'm staying right here. Once again, Diva Wine got enough jobs, honey. I'm a licensed medical esthetician. I'm a grub pub. I'm a door dasher. I'm a darn on a lift driver and everything else. Honey, I don't need the and now recently commentary reviewer. I don't need no more on my plate, baby. But for y'all that want to add other stuff on as well, um, opportunities will present itself for you to pick up stuff like training or different support areas or whatnot and a recent job that has become available is seller support so seller support is specifically for people who sell on amazon who mistakenly get transferred to us and think we supposed to be able to know certain terminology but we are just regular customer service support. I'm supposed to help you with your products. As far as how to, you know, prepare a spreadsheet, how to find your uh, order invoice and stuff on the darn going um, site, honey, that's that, that's terminology that is outside my control. That's where seller support is from. Problem is the way that it's coded in the outbound call is so difficult to get to their ass. And then it's like it's hard to get somebody on the phone. And now I know why. Because they in desperate need of seller support agents. So if you're interested in darn on coming to work for Amazon, work from home, and you're interested in learning about how to educate sellers on Amazon about the ins and outs of Amazon, honey, come on over. I will leave the link to the Work at Home Job Queens link down below. Search for seller support. Fill out the application, honey, and come on and join the team, honey, because we need y'all, honey. We definitely darn gonna need you, honey. Um, my position, far as I know, doesn't open back up until next year around, they start taking applications around August. So, yeah, customer service flex, flex agent, hours can vary greatly from as little as 20 hours a week to as much as 60 um, right now, the most that I've worked in a week is 38 hours. So not even, you know, full, not no overtime, no full time. Although, you know, with some of the extra time that was available, if I wanted to work overtime, the hours were definitely there to present itself. Even with the schedule, it's just like I said, I got so much going on. 
honey, my hours are, I, I try to keep it limited, you know, with the hours that I do. But once again, the way that the schedule has been set, if I really wanted to work 40 hours, each and every shift bid that I've had, there's been enough hours available where I could have actually attained, uh, well, except for the first week. The first week was, honey, I just did enough to get 36 hours. But this lab, this shift bid right here that I'm working on, the next one, and then the one afterwards, these three right here, I could have gotten 40 hours if I wanted to. So the hours are definitely there most of the darn on time. You're going to have your ups and downs. Be prepared to not get no help sometimes in the darn on chat room. Uh, definitely make friends, honey. Because you want to rely on your fellow darn on folks that you got in training with than your management. Because management might drop the ball on your ass. Management might darn on point you to that damn article that ain't, ain't not nail bit of help. There's so many times that I come across situations where it's not specifying what to do in this particular situation. Be prepared for those things as well. And it might be even more complex for y'all over on the seller side because y'all dealing with, you know, people selling items. I'm dealing with people buying items. So, yeah, it, it's going to have its ups and downs. But, you know, every job has that. Overall, I consider this good stress um, because there is enough help and tools there where it's not just overwhelming. Because, honey, I've been with some jobs before where it's just, it's overwhelming. It ain't no interest at all. I can't relate to what I'm doing. It's like I'm just here to work. And it's like I got tired of those types of jobs. I can't relate to it at all. Like when I used to work uh, through Apple by way of conduit, I never owned an Apple product. So it's like I I can't empathize with you. I can't darn on. I can't really give you no personal knowledge. of. It's like you can have all the knowledge in the world. But if you have no attachment to what you're working for, it's like you, you really can't, I feel like you can't really do the job efficiently like you really should. Same thing when a job tried to reach out to me paying $18 an hour selling wine and cheese. Haven't touched alcohol in over a year, but you know, I, I drunk so much wine in my darn on day, honey. I, I am a wine connoisseur, but cheese, honey... What I look like recommending cheese to somebody is somebody who suffered from darn on severe Crohn's disease and cheese can send me to the hospital in high numbers. So it's like certain stuff like that where I just cannot relate to the pro I'll be like, uh, I passed up jobs like that. But Amazon, honey, everybody be shopping on Amazon. Everybody for the most part shops on Amazon. So it's like when when certain stuff happens, you can empathize with the darn on um with the customer by way of personal experience. So it's like Amazon was that blessing for me. And it's been the best darn on work from home job thus far out of all the different job opportunities that I've done. I've done a sold cable. I mean business cable and darn on uh, residential cable. I done done translations jobs. Like I said, tech support jobs. The list goes on and on. Uh, ticket violations, everything. But this right here, ultimately, it has its stress, but it's been the best thus far. Um, you will get a computer. I think seller support, same thing. You will get your uh, device. You get paid for training. Um, not only you get paid for training, um, you will also get paid for even setting up the computer. So they will dedicate like six hours of time um, and you will be on the phone and they will walk you through setting up your monitor and everything else. And as long as you stay on the phone call the whole time, because they can see who's on the phone and everything, you will get paid those amounts. And I think y'all get paid the same thing. Come out the door, pay, you know, $15 an hour. If it's more, um, I definitely don't think it's less because I think Amazon across the board, the minimum is $15 an hour. Um, but yeah, $15 an hour minimum. The link will be down below. But anyways, y'all, that has been my help that week with dun 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 dun, dun. Amazon. Whew. That's been my week in a nutshell with Amazon. 
So that is it, y'all. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see y'all soon with more videos. Mwah.